Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're learning about how to write net ionic equations. This is a very important concept in AP Chemistry and so you really need to pay close attention to this. Now if you haven't yet learned how to uh, determine if something is soluble or not, you, know, you haven't learned those solubility rules, you need to go back and learn those very well before you jump into this. Well here's our first uh, reaction. It tells us that solutions of barium nitrate and sodium sulfate are mixed vigorously. So what are we going to have to do? Well, the first thing you want to do is write the formulas in their appropriate form. So the first one we have here is barium nitrate. And that's a solution, as it says here, and it is soluble. So we're going to write it in its dissociated form. So I'm going to write barium ions and nitrate ions. Now, there, there might be some folks that are saying, well, we actually have uh, two nitrate ions here, and that's true, but I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. This is AP Chemistry made easy, so I want to keep things as simple as possible. We'll worry, to, we'll worry about balancing these at the end of the process. Now the next one we have is sodium sulfate. And once again, that's a solution, so I'm going to write it in its ionized form. So sodium ions and sulfate ions. Now the question that we want to ask ourselves is when these ions swap partners like this, the barium is going to try to get with the sulfate and the sodium is going to try to get with the nitrate, which of those combinations, if any, is going to produce an insoluble compound? That's the question that you want to ask yourself. Well, you might remember from the solubility rules that sodium nitrate, you know, it has this nitrate on it, it has a sodium on it, it's going to be soluble. So that's not going to make a compound that we're going to see. But barium sulfate, that is an insoluble compound. That's one of the six sulfates that is uh, insoluble. And so that means that sodium and nitrate, well, those are called spectator ions. And they're called spectators because they're not really doing anything. They're like spectators at a ball game. They're there, but they're not really participating in what's going on. They're not participating in the reaction. So sodium and nitrate are called spectators or spectator ions. As a result, we don't write them into the overall net ionic equation. So what we are going to have will be barium 2 plus and sulfate 2 negative will combine to make barium sulfate. And when you write the overall net ionic equation, which is what this is called, you want to put the little states in there. If it's, if it's ionized, it's aqueous, and the insoluble compound is a solid. So we, so we put the S in there. And we also make sure it's balanced, and this is a balanced equation. So that is our net ionic equation. We leave out the spectators. Let's try another one. A chemist takes a flask of potassium chloride and adds a few drops of silver nitrate solution. So we start with the first compound given to us, the potassium chloride, and that's soluble, so we're going to write it in its ionized form, you know, potassium ions and chloride ions, and then silver nitrate. All nitrates are soluble, so that's going to be silver ions and nitrate ions. And once again, we want to think about the process here. When the ions swap, like this and that, which of those combinations, if any, is going to produce an insoluble compound? Is it potassium nitrate? Well, no, because all nitrates are soluble, aren't they? How about silver chloride? Ah, that's one of the three insoluble chlorides, isn't it? So that's the pair that's going to make our our precipitate, our insoluble compound. So when you write it, you know, you realize that potassium and nitrate are spectators, and so silver plus and chloride negative are going to combine to make AgCl. That's your silver chloride precipitate. And of course, this is a balanced equation. So that's how we write net ionic equations. I want us to do several examples so we understand completely how to do this. This is uh, something that a lot of students have trouble with. Solutions of calcium nitrate and zinc chloride are mixed in a beaker. Well, let's start with the calcium nitrate. So that is going to dissociate into calcium ions and nitrate ions. And the zinc chloride does the same thing. It's soluble. So once again, the ions are going to swap. 
and so like that and that. So which of those combinations is going to produce an insoluble compound? Well, it's not this one because uh, all nitrates are soluble, aren't they? How about this one, calcium and chloride? Well, all chlorides are soluble except for three, and this is not one of those three. We're, we actually have two products that are soluble. So guess what? That means everything is a spectator ion here. Nothing actually does anything. This is what we call a no reaction. And every now and then, you may see a case where we have a no reaction because you swap the ions, and you still have two products that are completely soluble. So no reaction on that one. Let's try another one involving an acid. We have to know the rules for what's a strong acid and a weak acid when we have that. A few drops of concentrated hydrochloric acid are added to a solution of sodium fluoride. So we'll start with the hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid. So strong acids, as you might recall from the last video, are dissociated. They are broken apart. So you write it as H plus and Cl negative. And then we have sodium fluoride, and that's soluble. So we write it as Na plus and F negative. And once again, the ions are going to swap. So we're going to have this and that. They're going to try to get together like that. And the question is, which of these combinations will produce an insoluble compound? Well, when we're talking about acids, that might not be the best question. Let's change that and say which of these will produce a non-ionized compound. Now we know that sodium chloride is soluble. You know, that's not going to precipitate out. But H plus and F minus, when those combine, they make HF, which is a weak acid. And you might recall from the last video that weak acids are not really ionized very much. So we're going to write that in its compound form. So we can say that sodium and chloride are spectator ions, and the H plus and the F negative are actually going to combine to make hydrofluoric acid. And since it's an acid, it is going to be aqueous still, so you want to write that with an AQ after it. So once again, it's a little bit different whenever you have acids involved. You have to understand if something is a strong acid or a weak acid. Strong acids are written ionized, Weak acids, like hydrofluoric, are written all together as a compound. Let's try another example here. A solution of calcium nitrate is added dropwise into a flask containing aqueous potassium sulfate. So we have our calcium nitrate, and so we're going to write that ionized because nitrates are soluble. And then we have potassium sulfate and Anything with an alkali metal is soluble, so we'll put the ionized version there. And once again, the ions are going to swap partners, and so the, the positive over here is going to get with the negative over there, and this positive tries to get with that negative. And so once again, the question is, which of these is going to be soluble, and which is going to be insoluble? Well, nitrates are soluble, so that's not going to make anything. But how about calcium getting with sulfate? Ah, that's one of the six insoluble sulfates, isn't it? We had calcium, strontium, and barium, and silver lead mercury uh, sulfates are insoluble. So yeah, those are going to get together. And so potassium and nitrate are the spectators, aren't they, once again? And so calcium and sulfate get together, and we make calcium sulfate as a precipitate. So that's another example of a net ionic equation. Let's try another one. A few drops of aqueous silver nitrate are titrated into a flask containing a solution of dilute ammonium iodide. So once again, we have silver nitrate, and all nitrates are soluble. So we're going to write that in its ionized form. We have silver ions and nitrate ions. And then we have ammonium iodide in this reaction as well. So anything that has an ammonium on the front of it is going to be soluble, isn't it? As we learned in our solubility rules back in lesson 10. So we write that in its ionized form. And once again, these ions are going to swap partners, or at least try to swap partners, like that. And which one is going to be the precipitate? Well, it's not this one here, is it? Because all nitrates are soluble, as is anything that has an ammonium ion in it. So that's not going to make anything. 
But how about silver and iodide? Ah, iodides are soluble except for silver, lead, and mercury. So those are going to get together. And ammonium and nitrate are the spectators. Silver ion and iodide ion combine to make silver iodide precipitate. So that's how we can solve that problem. Let's try another one. This one's a little bit tougher. We have a few drops of acetic acid that are dispensed into a barium or into a solution of barium fluoride. So once again, we take the acetic acid. Now, is that a strong acid or a weak acid? Well, it's a weak acid, isn't it? It's not one of our big six that we talked about in the last video. So we're going to write that in its non-ionized form, HC2H3O2. And then we have barium fluoride. And you know, fluorides are generally soluble, so we're going to write that in its ionized form. And once again, these are going to try to swap partners. This time the H is going to try to get with F negative, and the barium ion is going to try to get with the acetate part of that, the C2H3O2. So what are we going to have? Will the barium be able to make anything with the acetate? Well, no, because all acetates are soluble, aren't they? But H and F, well, that's a weak acid, isn't it? So those are going to make something that will actually combine together. That's a weak acid. So when you write the products, you know, barium and acetate, those are ionized, but HF is going to be written together. So looking at the, 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 complete, ion, the complete ionic equation here, can you see what the spectator ion is going to be? There's only one spectator ion this time. It's the barium ion because it doesn't do anything. So that's the spectator. And then this is what's left. The acetic acid combines with the fluoride ion to make hydrofluoric acid and acetate ion. And so we write that all out. That, it's a little bit lengthier this time, but that's the net ionic equation. Let's try another one here. Solutions of potassium phosphate and lead 2 nitrate are allowed to react in a test tube. So we have our potassium phosphate first, and that's soluble because anything with a potassium or a group 1 ion is soluble. So I'll write that in its ionic form. And then we have lead 2 nitrate, and all nitrates are soluble. So I write that in its uh, ionized form. And once again, these ions are going to try to swap partners like that. We know that nitrates are soluble, so that's not going to make anything. But phosphates are insoluble, especially you know these, these heavy phosphates like lead. So that's going to make, those are going to get together and make a compound. And of course, our potassium and nitrate are left out. They're just spectators, aren't they? So when we write the net ionic equation, it's lead 2 plus and phosphate 3 negative yield lead 2 phosphate. And so we have that. Now, you might notice that's not a balanced equation, is it? We have one lead on the left and three on the right. And the phosphates aren't balanced either. There are two over here and one over here. So let's balance that. And now we have a full net ionic equation. So as you can see, we have lots of examples here of doing net ionic equations. The goal is to leave out the spectator ions. Uh, let's do one last question here. We're going to take some dilute sodium hydro hydroxide and titrate that into a flask of 0 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid. So we'll start with the sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base, so it is written in its ionized form, just like this. And then we have hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. So we're going to write that in its ionized form as well. And once again, these are trying to swap partners. So once again, the question that we ask ourselves is, uh, which of these will combine into make something that is uh, not ionized? Well, sodium and chloride, that's certainly a soluble compound, isn't it? So that's not going to make anything. But how about H plus and OH negative? Those combine to make HOH, or as we normally write that, H2O, which is water. And that's a non-electrolyte, as we said in the last video. It doesn't really ionize much at all. So those two get together. And you know we're going to have the two spectators. Sodium and chloride ions are spectators. But the net ionic equation here is H plus and OH negative 
yield water in its liquid form. Now, this looks like an interesting equation here. There is actually a shortcut for this. Anytime you have a strong acid and a strong base, this is essentially the a net ionic equation that you're going to get. So if you ever see a strong acid and a strong base, you can just kind of go right to that and write the net ionic equation that you have here. I hope this video helped you in learning net ionic equations and how to write them. If you learned something, if you got better at writing net ionic equations, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel, ring that bell so that you're notified of all future videos. This is a series of the complete AP Chemistry course. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I'd like you to get a 5 on your AP Chemistry exam. Uh, and so join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.